What's up guys, I'm Morley from Yelron Blog, and today I'm going to show you how I made a wooden tape dispenser using bent lamination. I made this project as part of the Rockler Bentwood Challenge put on by the Modern Maker Podcast. The tape dispenser is made from layers of oak veneer I bought from the Home Depot. I measured the veneer to be about 1 40th of an inch thick, which I used to design the tape dispenser in AutoCAD. I designed the tape dispenser around a standard sized roll of scotch tape, which conveniently has a hole exactly one inch in diameter. I printed this out one to one to use as a template for the form. I didn't accurately model where the four layers of veneer joined to become eight, so I just thickened up this area by hand. I cut out two copies of the template, one for the inside form and one for the outside form. A standard roll of scotch tape is three quarters of an inch thick, so I figured that three layers of three quarter inch MDF would give me plenty of width to form the tape dispenser. When gluing the outer form template to the MDF, I penciled in some extra space where the ends of the veneer would meet. I drilled a hole to get started and cut out the layers of MDF with my jigsaw. By going super slow, using the curve control setting in a narrow blade, and always making sure the base plate was flat, I ended up getting really clean, consistent cuts. I think if I went any thicker on the MDF, the jigsaw blade deflection would become a bit too much for making an accurate form. Once I had one layer of the outer and inner form cut out, I traced the pieces to cut out the remaining two layers. I made sure to trace the upside of the MDF since the jigsaw blade drifts a bit toward the bottom of the cut. I glued the layers together in stages, starting with just two layers at a time. Once the glue was dry enough to remove the clamps, I glued the third layer to the first two. I try to wipe off as much excess glue as possible at this stage, especially in the really tight areas where the veneers meet, since this section would be virtually impossible to sand. While the glue was drying on the forms, I cut the veneers to size. This was really easy to do with a straight edge and a rotary cutter that I typically use for cutting leather. I cut the veneer strips about an eighth of an inch wider than the form. I then left the veneers to soak in water to make them more pliable to bend. Once the glue for the form was dry, I sanded the inside faces flush. I had to use quite a variety of sanding techniques to get in all the nooks and crannies, but it actually took a surprisingly little amount of sanding to get relatively flush faces. One more point for the jigsaw. After a day and a half of soaking, the veneers were sufficiently waterlogged for the first forming. For this first forming, I was only concerned about bending the veneers to shape, not gluing them together. I got this idea from Ben Ueda's video about making a bent lamination coat hook. I'll link that video in the description. I gotta admit, doing this forming outside on a deck was pretty finicky, but it all came together in the end. I left this to dry for two and a half days. If you notice a continuity error here, you're right. I actually forgot to add the wax paper between the veneer and MDF the first time I clamped everything together, so I had to redo the forming. 
I'm not sure how necessary the wax paper is for the first forming, but my thinking is it at least protects the thin veneers a bit. I was pleasantly surprised with how well the veneers took on the shape of the form. I applied glue between the four pieces of veneer and then sandwiched them together. Since so little surface area is exposed while the veneers are in the form, I left this to dry for a full four days. Similar to when I made the concrete fountain, I forgot how tricky it is to get an inner form free once the thing that you're forming becomes rigid. So, I had to get a little creative. The next step was trimming the tape dispenser to width. I used my newly acquired Japanese pole saw to cut off a sliver from each end of the piece, just enough to get rid of the splintery edges. This required some unconventional clamping techniques. I bought an old, cheap serrated knife from the thrift store and cut a piece off with my rotary tool to use for the cutting edge of the tape dispenser. I then trimmed the ends of the veneer flush where the cutting edge would go. The next step was the one that I was most nervous for, cutting the slot where the roll of tape goes. I ended up using my rotary tool with a cutoff wheel, which, surprisingly, worked perfectly and gave me a pretty clean cut edge. As expected, there was a good bit of burning, but I made sure to stay inside the line so that I could sand off the burn marks later. I did as much as I could with the cutoff wheel and then used a keyhole saw to finish the cut. I sanded the slot flush to the pencil line, and while I was at it, sanded the whole piece to 120 grit. The next step was making the shaft for the tape to sit in out of one inch dowel. I chucked the dowel into my drill and sanded off some of the diameter to make for an easier fit into the tape dispenser. With the tape in place, I could figure out the placement of the cutting edge. I quickly realized that with the cutting edge pointed up, there isn't enough surface area for the tape to stay attached when you take off a piece. So I trimmed the cutting edge even narrower so it could lay on its side on top of the veneer ends. I used a bit of epoxy and some mini spring clamps to attach the veneer ends together. Once this had cured, I sanded the ends down with some 120 grit so the cutting edge would sit at the right angle. But before attaching it, I gave the piece a final sanding up to 220 grit and then finished it with two coats of spray-on polyurethane. <laughs> 
Once the finish was dry, I attached the cutting edge to the veneer end grain with epoxy. Having only 5 minutes of working time was a double-edged sword between getting the cutting edge in the right position and getting off all of the excess before the epoxy cured. For my first experience doing bent lamination, I'm really pleased with how this project turned out. Shout out to Ben Uader for demonstrating the two-step forming technique in his video, and shout out to the whole Modern Maker podcast crew for giving me a reason to try a new technique. I definitely want to do more bent lamination in the future. Thanks for watching, and check out the rest of my channel for lots of other projects.